the Republican Party is no longer the party of Ronald Reagan and, and Bush 41 or, or Eisenhower or hell, even Lincoln. Um, it is it is the party of Donald Trump. It is MAGA. Michael Steele, yeah. we have at least two black Republicans running for president, Larry Elder and Tim Scott. What are their chances? Uh, uh, slim to none uh, and and slim just left. So <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Look, it, 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 you know, this is about profiling. This is about um you know getting getting your name in the narrative larry elder and and tim neither of whom are going to challenge donald trump um can't seriously believe that you know the 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 gods will move the mountains in a way that says okay you're going to be the last person standing and the nomination will be yours uh so I, I don't I don't understand the the politics here because politically it makes no sense um, to do this now. If if Tim, for example, is setting up a potential twenty twenty eight run when it'll be an open seat, uh, presuming Biden reelection um, and and so forth, maybe. But in the end, I, I don't get I don't get the end game here. Um, I, I think that there are other things that Tim had an opportunity to focus on and to get completed as senator to sort of set up a presidential run that would have maybe changed the narrative a little bit. But having failed those those opportunities, I don't see what the storyline is other than the happy talk that we saw when he announced. But Tim Scott is a sitting U.S. senator. Right. And why are his chances so slim to none as slim left the room or the building even because i i think it's i think it's important to understand where the republican party is right now the republican party is no longer the party of ronald reagan and and bush 41 or mm. or or eisenhower or hell even lincoln um it is it is the party of donald trump it is maga it is about grievance. You, Donald Trump, in announcing his bid, told not just the American people, but specifically the members of the Republican Party, I am your retribution. Yeah. Who starts a presidential campaign telling I am your retribution? So when, when Tim comes out and talks about you know, America being a city on a hill and and you know, we're going to come together and we're going to unify and we're going to People are like, okay, let me get this straight. I got this guy over here saying he's going to kick somebody's behind, and you telling me that you want to hold their hand. I'm for behind kicking, and that's where people are right now in the party. They're they're looking for someone who will be their retribution, and unless you have a narrative that will will show them the better angels. Um, in this, and that they buy that idea of the better angels, I don't know where that conversation goes, because the base has made it very clear what they want. As you say, Donald Trump says, and well, he did say it, I, I saw it myself with my own eyes in real time, I am your retribution, that from the former president of the United States, the crowd went crazy. That yeah. means people are angry. But doesn't Tim Scott at least pacify some of that anger by saying this nation is not a racist country. Does that pacify some of the anger in some of those who are angry that follow Donald Trump? And doesn't it pacify some it of the anger? It doesn't pacify it. it. It turns a blind eye to it, which is mm. largely what a lot of white folks who believe that want. They don't want to have to look in the mirror and confront that. That's what the that's what the battle against the 1619 Project about. Look, white folks getting exercised because black people are telling their history telling our experience in this country, starting with how we were brought here and then how we built this joint and, and all the obstacles that was placed in front of us to that, that, that sort of spoke to the idea that, you know, Jefferson and others wrote on paper about freedom and the American way of life. Now, oh yeah, so that's, we want to now tell what our experience was in achieving that. And white folks are like, oh, hell no, we can't talk about that. So, yeah, this idea of saying, you know, when a black man stands up and says, no, this isn't a racist country, who believes that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, ask yourself, who honestly can sit there and look at 250 years of history and go, 
yeah, that's that. There's no racism here at all. Never has been. Jim Crow, anybody? I mean, what the hell are we talking about? So when you when you have someone say that, it's to appease people. It's not it's not to make them feel good necessarily because it's not. It's just to say I don't want to have to deal with that. And guess what? I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to be the one to force you to look at history and understand exactly, not necessarily in a negative way saying, oh my God, all, all y'all are bad, but say, can we at least contextualize and appreciate what the journey has been for everybody? Mm -hmm. And then that way we can go forward in solving the things that are bothering us right now. Who will be uh, matched against each other in 2024 in the general election? Probably to... Uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Uh, I don't see I don't see this storyline being written any differently. Um, who's going to take down Donald Trump? Uh, Ron DeSantis is, is his jaw is weaker than a than a glass of water. Tim Scott, well, he, he's already capitulated and defended Trump. I, I don't know why now he's going to go after him. maybe someone like a Chris Christie who who's you know got that kind of fire in the belly. But, you know, how much traction does he get and how much does he able, is he able to peel off of Donald Trump's behind in terms of Trump based support? That's a big question. So right now, until that begins to unfold and that narrative takes shape and we see that there is some fight against Trump, Trump is Trump is the guy in charge here. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I just think that we need to be wide eyed and smart about what's happening versus what isn't happening and what's happening right now in the country is that the narrative is being set up that makes the results of 2020 and the angst that led to January 6th pale in comparison. What you have in place is what now is what you didn't have in place in 2020, meaning MAGA has control of election boards, MAGA has control of a couple of secretary of state slots, MAGA has control of some governorships. MAGA has control of party apparat apparatus and MAGA is in Congress. Can you say MAGA Marjorie is in Taylor Congress? Green and, right. and George Santos at the very least. So and Lauren Boebert. That right. Anything that throws this election into the House of Representatives is not a good day for democracy because MAGA controls the House. So we need to be mindful of what the fight is about here and not lose sight of, of the narratives that that have already taken shape. So when you hear people out here whining about this, that, or the other thing, stay focused on the end game. Vote out those who are not supporting your interests right now. And that interest, that core interest has to be the democracy. Because um, if, it, it, if it isn't, if that goes away, folks, guess what? It doesn't matter whether you pro-life or pro-choice, pro-business or or, or pro-environment. It's going to be what MAGA decides the country is. And they've already told us what that looks like.